In the first day, we solved systems using graphing. Today, we're going to look at a second method, which is solving a linear system by substitution. Here are the four steps that you need. Number one, you're going to solve one of the equations for one of its variables, either x or y, or whatever other two variables are given to you. Step two, you're going to substitute the expression from step one into the other equation and solve for the other variable. Step three, you're going to substitute the value from step two into the revised equation from step one and solve. And finally, step four, you're going to check the solution and make sure it works. I'm going to go through the steps with you, kind of number them as we go right now so that you can keep track of which one's which. Our system we have is 3x plus y equals 5, and 2x minus y is equal to 10. And our very first step is to solve one of the equations for one of its variables. Now, you can choose any variable that you want. There are four of them. You can solve for this x. You can solve for this y in the first equation. You could solve for the x in the second equation, or you could solve for the, the y in the second equation. Now, depending on which variable you solve for, we'll tell you whether or not you're going to deal with nice numbers, whole numbers, or if you're going to deal with fractions. If you don't have to deal with the fractions, it's a little bit easier. So making a smart choice in choosing which variable to solve for really will help you as you start to solve it. However, you could use any variable, no matter how kind of crazy your numbers might get, and you get the same answer in the end. But when you're choosing a variable, the easiest ones to solve for are the ones that have a coefficient of positive 1. This y up here in the very first equation, the reason for that is once we subtract the 3x over, there's nothing to divide by. So there's no fractions that are going to come out of that. Your second best choice is to choose any variable that has a negative 1 as its, as its coefficient. Because dividing by negative 1 will only change the sign of those numbers and will not make them into fractions. If there are no coefficients of 1 or negative 1, substitution might not be your best choice. If you have to use substitution, then you can choose any other number that you want to use. But most of the time, if you're going to use substitution, you're looking for something that has a coefficient of 1 or a coefficient of negative 1, positive 1 being the easier one to solve. So in step 1, we are going to solve for the y in the very first equation. So let's label this step 1. And we're going to take the 3x plus y equal to 5, and we are solving for y. The only thing we have to do to solve for y is subtract the 3x from both sides. And we get y is equal to 5 minus 3x. And that's our very first step. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to put a box around this because this is what we want to substitute. We are saying that this y value in any y in our problem is the exact same thing as this expression right here. So in step two, we are going to make our substitution. We are going to look at the second equation, and I'm going to put a little box around the y because that's what we solved for originally. Actually, I want it just around the y. And what I'm saying is the stuff in this box is the same as the stuff in this box. And what we're going to do is we're just going to flip-flop flip them. So I'm going to rewrite this bottom equation and switch what's in the box. Start with my 2x. I still have my minus sign. That needs to stay here. And then I'm going to draw my box. And instead of putting the y inside that box, I'm going to replace it with what I had in step 1, which is 5 minus 3x. And then I continue. I still have my equal sign after the box. And I still have the 10. So once again, everything's the same here as it is here, except we've changed the y with what y is equal to from step 1. The reason we do that is now we have an equation with the same variable instead of having two different variables. And this is something that we can solve. To solve this, remember this negative outside is very similar to having a negative 1 outside, and we do have to distribute that negative as we start solving. So we get 2x, and then distributing negative 1 times 5 is negative 5, and negative 1 times negative 3x is a positive 3x, equal to 10. Now we can combine our like terms. We have 2x plus 3x, which will give us 5x, minus 5 equal to 10. Solving for x, we would then add 5 to both sides. And we get 5x equal to 15. 
And then finally divide both sides by 5, and we get x is equal to 3. Then we move to step 3. And step 3 says we are going to take this x value here, and we are going to plug it in to step 1. So I'm going to take my equation from step 1, which is y equals 5 minus 3x. And now I know what x is. x is 3. So I'm going to plug that right in to where my x value is. So I know y is equal to 5 minus 3 times 3. Remember, this 3 right here came from here. And then if I evaluate it, I get y is equal to 5 minus 9, which is negative 4. And I have my answer. So my answer, I can write it in two different ways. I can write it as an ordered pair. My ordered pair always goes x and then y. Or you can simply write x is equal to 3 and y is equal to negative 4. And then step four, our last step, is the check step. And it's very, very important that you check. You should know turning in the test whether or not you have these right or not. So step four, we go back to the beginning, back to our very original equations, and we plug in our x and our y value to make sure everything works. So I have in the first equation three times three plus negative four equal to five. And I'm checking 3 times 3 is 9, minus 4 is 5. So I get 5 is equal to 5, and I know it works for the first equation. I have to check both. It doesn't matter if it works for one. It has to work for both in order to say the solution is, is true. So if I check the second one, I have 2 times 3 minus a negative 4 equal to 10. 2 times 3 is 6. Two negatives make a positive, so 6 plus 4 will give me 10 equal to 10. Now I know it works for both of the equations, and I can say for sure that my answer is correct. If you have questions, let me know.